The intertidal zone, a narrow strip of wet surface between the dry land and the roaring ocean. For many seashore creatures, it is a middle ground between life and death. Cool, oxygen-rich waters harbor a variety of life forms and beach sand becomes a final resting place for a plethora of marine animals brought here by crushing waves and left to dry out under the scorching sun. For humans, by the way, the splash zone has a tendency to turn quickly from a playground to a place of danger. Sometimes it can be deadly. Slippery rocks hidden underneath boulders and sneaky waves are not to joke about. I personally know a bunch of people who suddenly found themselves in life-threatening situations while enjoying a beach walk or tide pooling on a pleasant day. In this video, we compiled footage recorded during multiple trips to beautiful beaches of Central California. You will see a variety of strange and interesting things and beings caught on camera. The gray rocks brought by storms to the beaches of California often have burrowings in them. The paddock clams from genus Penatella drill those holes in soft sedimentary material and live in their cozy places, constantly expanding the cavity to make room for their growing bodies. The shells stuck in the rocks are a rather common find. Live boring clams have a totally different look. The only thing visible through a hole is a brownish mantle with two openings to circulate water, providing a fresh supply of oxygen for breathing and small food particles for these unusual self-imprisoned mollusks. One of the openings has multiple appendages. It's called inhalant siphon, and the appendages prevent large debris from getting in and cluttering the entrance. Truly an alien-like animal. This little guy was almost dry when we found it on the sand and put it in a tide pool. It's still in bad shape and is hardly recognizable. It looks like a white sea cucumber. Let's hope it will recover. This is a whitened and dried jaw fragment of a juvenile marine mammal, probably a seal or a sea elephant. The bone is fragile and the tooth does not have roots, an indication that it was a deciduous or baby tooth. Just as a reminder, many states have special rules regarding remains of the vertebrae animals, and it's better to leave those remains where they are found. Look at these sea cockroaches feeding on the orange bacteria growing in the stream of fresh water. If you think about it, the scene is actually primeval. The ancient creatures, like these arthropods, were the first ones who ventured on land out of water. Since not much of the vegetation was around at that time, they likely resorted to grazing on the colorful algal and bacterial mats. I'm sure the trilobite-looking bugs enjoyed having the dry land for themselves for a while, until the predators followed them. The scientific name is Ligia. These semi-terrestrial isopods like rocky environment where they can hide near water, which is necessary to breathe using the gills. Beach flies, the insects of much more recent evolutionary design, take advantage of slimy but nutritious brown algae. If you are patient and pay attention, you can spot the slow and careful movements of the limpets. They roam within a small patch of a rock to scrape off the fresh layer of algae or push away any intruders. The tide pools are prime real estate, and you have to be ready to protect your territory. Occasionally, you can encounter something that you have never seen before. Like these wiggly worms with olive stripes on them. They stick out of the sand and wave their bodies like they are looking to grab something. Considering their behavior and the color, our best guess is that these creatures are similar to green worms like Simpsagatifera. While juvenile, these worms eat algae that continue to survive within the bodies of the worms, supposedly supplying them with products of photosynthesis. Such symbiotic relationships with tiny photosynthetic algae are rather common for many marine animals like corals, anemones, worms, and clams. If the conditions are not optimal for algae, the worms can bleach and lose the coloration, for instance, in water with higher than normal acidity. 
Everything goes for this anemone that covered itself with a nice collection of shells and stones. Such an armor serves to slow down the drying after the water recedes and will protect the anemone from damage by UV light. Sea fleas or beach hoppers are very fast hopping scavengers. They are amphipods and related closely to shrimp rather than fleas. They love decaying algae. The word amphipods means different legs and refers to two distinct types of legs these animals have. To dig or to hop effectively, they need a certain specialized design of the appendages. The semi-transparent bodies of sea fleas easily blend into the sandy background, a typical example of an excellent camouflage. Some amphipods have interesting lifestyles, like whale lice that live on whales eating algae and flaking skin. You can observe many species of seaweed on the California coast. This frond of brown algae also carries many spiral tube worms. Notice that there are right and left-handed shells. An intricate colony of encrusting bryozoans. This particular pile of entangled fronds contains several types of brown algae known under the common name of kelp. Each species has specialized bulbous parts filled with gas to keep the algae floating closer to the surface and getting more sunlight, the source of energy. These parts are air bladders and their shape helps to distinguish different species. Bull kelp has massive air bladders with thick walls. It's considered to be the fastest growing organism on the planet. The small perennial kelp can be recognized by the series of smooth, elongated air bladders, which are edible, by the way. They are pickled, boiled in soup, or dried into a powder to be used as part of a pizza. Supposedly, powdered kelp gives pizza an umami flavor, resembling meat broth. There are special kinds of crabs that live among kelp. They are called kelp crabs, spider crabs, or shieldback crabs. We found a couple of them one day among the rocks near Pebble Beach. They were especially fine specimens, a female with eggs under her abdomen and a male with significantly large pincers. I imagine they were caught in a storm while fertilizing eggs, a male cradling the female instead of clenching the kelp frond. Sad story, but maybe it's not the case. Anyway, the crab's carapace or cephalothorax does look like a shield. We try to check the root-like structure that attaches the algae to the rocks at the bottom of the ocean. It's called holdfast, and very often we find interesting creatures trapped inside. In this case, it was a little mole crab in need of extra help to get out. The crab was probably entangled when the waves dragged the kelp along the beach. We carefully removed it and placed the little guy into the wet sand. The crab disappeared in a second. Good luck, little fellow. Here is rockweed. The inflated ends of this algae are split in a fork fashion and resemble two fingers. It happens during spawning season. The squishy bulbs contain reproductive cells. When the rockweed is exposed to air during low tides, bulbs shrink, and those cells are released and get spread by the waves to settle down and grow into many more rockweeds. Periwinkles pack themselves into a cavity in the rock. Good place to hide. Black turban mollusks scrape the microscopic algae from the surface of the rocks. The large one carries a tiny limpet. Perhaps the free rider is the reason why the shell is so deformed. Limpets are known to make little bases where they entrench themselves in a round cavity for better attachment. The body of the mollusk is quite dark with few horizontal wrinkles of gray color. I've read that the black turban can live as long as a hundred years. Well, I do not know about that, but 30 to 40 years seems quite reasonable for this no hurry gastropod.
one creature's luck is another creature's tragedy. This goal somehow caught a rockfish. Two more things I'd like to say to the people visiting the beach. If you see any fishing line, please remove it from nature. The birds can get trapped in it. The same goes for face masks. Dispose of them properly in trash cans or at least break the loops, please. A bird may get its neck caught in the loop and there is only a slim chance that the bird will be able to remove it on its own before it dies of hunger. Having the mask on its neck will impair its ability to fly and find food. Just be respectful to nature's creatures whose home you came to visit while walking on the beach. Good luck with your adventures, stay safe, and see you next time. Ciao!